first thing I'd like to pass to is uh, Colonel Swan. Okay, thanks, uh, Keg. My name, as he said, is uh, Colonel Bill Swan. I'm, I'm uh, APW TAC Air up in Headquarters Marine Corps uh, working for uh, Lieutenant General uh, Stick Rudder, who's the new Deputy Commandant for Aviation. He's here in the building. Uh, you'll get to see him tomorrow at the flag panel. And uh, so what I'd like to say, though, is I, I left command of MAG-11 and was the Hornet TMS lead for the uh, two years prior to that and carrier um, aviator my whole life as, as a legacy Hornet guy. Uh, but, but I will phone a friend here if I need some help on the F-35 because that is really steroids program. What I'd like to do real briefly, though, uh, to keep us all on track is just kind of update you on where we're at with F-35. So the Marine Corps is taking our three TAC air platforms, the, the Hornet, the, the Harrier, and the Prowler, and we're transitioning them all into F-35. So, so when we're done, our future force will, will be 18 active duty squadrons with two reserves and then two FRSs. Where we're at right now, we have 59 of our program of, of 420 jets uh, already in the fleet uh, or at the RAG or in test. Uh, of that breakdown of 420, there's 353 jets that are, are going to be Bs and then 67 Cs. Um, you can see underneath, we have the RAG at 501, which is in Beaufort, South Carolina. They've already trained eight Cat 1s. They're in the fleet uh, and out on patrol, which we'll talk about here uh, with 121. Um, they currently have five in, in flow and, and another 11 ready to start. VMFA-121 is stood up, and they're forward deployed in Iwakuni, Japan. They're going to be uh, taking the Dawn Patrol here in the spring on the 31st Mew on WASP. VMFA-211 is currently in Yuma. Uh, they are flushed out with 16 airplanes. They're going to give uh, six to, to uh, 121 here uh, in, in November, December, uh, and to flush those guys out. And then they're going to take the 13th Mew uh, this summer, uh, next summer, that is, and, and that'll be on Essex. Uh, and then uh, right below that you'll see VMFA 122 was a Hornet squadron. They just stood down in Beaufort and are standing back up uh, in Yuma, Arizona. Uh, and, and they will start their transition to be ready to go in 2020. And then of note, uh, 314 is up there. They, they will do a GFM deployment here in the spring. Uh, they will come back to Miramar and that will be the first uh, F-35C squadron. Uh, and we'll have Marines showing up uh, to Lemoore to start that transition uh, in training with uh, 125 in Lemoore. And they're, they're on the map, uh, ready to go uh, as depicted there. So that's, that's kind of where we're at with, with F-35B in, in our transition. There's the, there's the chiclet chart with where we're at. The top three are done. We're working on number four. And then the blue is where I would draw your attention. Those, the blue squadrons are the Charlie squadrons. Again, probably hard to see from the back. Happy to take your questions on that, but that's the transition plan uh, that, that we're uh, driving forward to in the Marine Corps. All right, good afternoon, folks. Terrence O'Neill, call sign SPOT. I am uh, currently in the N98 office as a special access program officer. Uh, I'll slide over and take F-35 uh, requirements officer from FISBO Scott when he heads down to 106 here in November uh, for his bonus command. Um, kind of talking real quick through where we are at with F-35C from a Navy perspective. Uh, just a little over 8,900 hours flown so far. Uh, 67 pilots trained and about 780 maintainers have gone through the training syllabus. Uh, obviously have squadron down in England with the 101. Uh, they currently have 13 aircraft in their inventory, 10 on the ramp right now. Got three uh, up already going through some depot uh, level maintenance. Seven aircraft uh, out in Lemoore. With 125, 125, which just uh, stood up this, uh, this January, uh, they've got seven aircraft on the ramp and getting ready to start our first transition for our fleet squadron of VFA-147 coming up here in March of 2018. Um, in addition, uh, those guys are currently loading 3F software, which is the first fleet introduction uh, software to deliver full warfighting capability to the uh, F-35C. Um, as far as kind of the infrastructure to support those aircraft in Lemoore, uh, we have got the initial hangar modification of Hangar 5 done. Uh, the, the second part of that is tracking to be ready to accept 147 as they uh, get their jets and go through the transition. If we uh, 
kind of take a look at uh, kind of the next big mi milestones, SDD, uh, so the delivery of uh, the full capability to the platform is tracking and on time and looking for an IOC uh, for the F35C, hopefully uh, by tail hook of next year, so August of 2018, we'll be talking about IOC capability um, as we look to push uh, 147 out to the fleet. Some issues uh, that I'm sure pe people have questions about. Um, so 101 and 125 were just out at the boat uh, and hooked down this week. Uh, that boat detachment had to be cut short just a little bit because of the hurricane in Irma. Um, so they pulled back in a little bit early. Uh, for, for those familiar with the program, you're familiar with the nose oscillations basically during the cat stroke. Uh, it was a little bit of a rough ride as you were going down the stroke. Uh, they put in a fix to that, basically changing the tension on the holdback fitting uh, and everything that we got back kind of in that first brush uh, as far as debrief from the guys that were out there was that the ride was much smoother going down the cat stroke, so it looks like we've got uh, some good headway made on that issue. Uh, another issue uh, was the green glow, as it's called, uh, in the helmet, uh, so the, as you were flying at night, uh, specifically behind the ship, uh, not good visibility out of the original design. Uh, took that back and there's now a OLED uh, display in the helmet and they did not get the opportunity to fly it on a really low illumination night. Uh, they did get some rather high illumination kind of looks uh, through the hel helmet behind the boat and once again it looks like we're tracking in the right direction uh, for that fix. Uh, probably the other big fix that people have uh, are curious about is AIM-9 carriage on stations 1 and 11. Uh, once again, we've given that back to the engineers, uh, and it looks like we've got a fix there as well. Um, basically, increasing the strength of that outer wing spar, and we have replaced some panels uh, on the outer portion of the wing. It looks like uh, we should be good to go for AIM-9 uh, ex external carriage on stations 1 and 11 as we're tracking uh, forward and looking to push out uh, to the fleet. Other big things uh, as we look for the future of the program, uh, one of the big things with the JET is the follow-on modernization plan. Uh, I can tell you that the office that I currently work in, uh, there are a lot of uh, just really incredible capabilities coming to the platform. Uh, and when we look at kind of the Navy's mindset as far as uh, how, how we're going to prioritize bringing those updates to the JET, and how we integrate that fifth gen aircraft into our, uh, into our fleet and, and the mix of fourth and fifth gen airplanes. Uh, the things that we are targeting right now for that follow on modernization uh, is the capability in the CD role uh, and the capability in the OCA role, uh, or the offensive counter air role, uh, and really using the sensors on the airplane uh, to fuse data and then push that data out uh, to increase capability for our fourth gen platforms, uh, as well as using uh, the arrays on the airplane to protect those fourth gen air uh, platforms uh, from an electronic attack standpoint as well. Um, and that's kind of that, that mindset. So that gather, uh, fuse, use, and share uh, as the, the sensors on this airplane are incredible uh, and basically spreading that, uh, that situational awareness across uh, the other strike platforms that are airborne with us. Other, other hurdles that we have, uh, Alice and uh, OMS, uh, this aircraft generates almost a terabyte of uh, information on each and every flight, so handling that in the carrier environment is going to be uh, a challenge. We're working through that, um, but that is definitely something that from a mission planning standpoint, a maintenance standpoint, and a mission debrief standpoint, uh, handling that amount of information and the, the information that the jet collects, using it and turning it around in a timely fashion is something that we, we've got to get our hands around and something that we're working uh, with the folks at Lockheed to make sure that when, when the capability hits the fleet that we have answers. Um, in addition, uh, just developing the tactics. So. Uh, it's probably a, a little bit of a shock to, to some people in the room. We've been flying F-35C within the Top Gun course for almost two years now. 
uh, doing some fighter integration hops. Uh, in addition to that, uh, 101 and 125 have been very generous in sending airplanes up to Fallon to do TAC d &E basically the week after the class while they still have some fleet jets in town. Um, and once again, figuring out how we integrate uh, this fifth gen platform, it is our, our first foray into fifth gen aircraft as a, as a Navy, and how we integrate uh, and develop tactics uh, to, to maintain the viability of our fourth gen aircraft uh, and maximize the capability of our fifth gen aircraft to meet that threat in that uh, mid 2020s time frame. With that. Lastly, um, I'll leave you just with an example here of uh, one of the many examples of how our investments uh, here in N98 are bringing more capabilities to the fleet. Um, so the first F-35 deployment will be uh, in 2021 for F-35C. The Marines will be going before that with F-35B on the L-Class. And we're developing, um, the, well, the F-35 program is developing a sled to uh, carry the engine. And uh, this will be one of the ways that we'll be able to uh, support the air wing of the future. Um, it doesn't fly without supply, as we like to say. So um, this is going to be uh, a great capability we're bringing. I've got a quick question for Colonel Swan. I missed the punchline. When do you expect the last legacy Hornet squadron to transition to Lightning twos? Sir, good question. So, so the Harrier will be done in 2026, and the legacy Hornet, you ready for this? Drum roll, 2030. We'll make it, sir. We're going to make Hornet great again. <laughs> yeah, we, sir, sir, I got the, I got the. If you want to look at the end, I have the the chart that I put up, um, and it, it kind of breaks it out, and it, it shows you by year, and, and I'd be happy to share that with you.